Hi there, Bronco fans. It's Shad and Danny, and welcome to the 2013 Bronco Planet season, Shad. And before we get to talking about the Broncos, big news right here in-house. Well, new digs, as you yep. might have recognized. So excited about being in our hometown of Parker at the Tech Building. We're at Stage 10, and yes. we are excited about all the different avenues we're going to give you this year, different looks, different guests. We had right. Reggie Rivers in here the other night hanging out with us. Very excited about the Broncos and not just the digs here. We just got through our NFL draft there. Danny, what are your thoughts? How do we do, brother? Well, Shad, I think uh, everyone can agree that this year's draft was a little bit on the unsexy side. No big marquee names, no Andrew Lux, no Vaughn Miller type of guys out there. But uh, good, solid players nonetheless. And I think the Broncos certainly addressed a big needed defensive tackle with Sylvester Williams. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think he was number one on the Broncos list, mm -hmm. right? We've heard from Cliss. You know, certainly they talked about Xavier Rhodes. But what the right. Broncos did do is what everybody thought they were going to do. Right. Went after a defensive tackle, went after a running back, went after a cornerback, and then filled in some gaps, you know, mm -hmm. with uh, Doomerville going on. So let's break it down for you. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, let's talk with the running back, all right? Because Eddie Lacy was discussed mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. We thought, hey, it may, it may happen. There he was available. Right. And then they go with the, the sure rock carrier in uh, right. Monte Ball. Well, Monte Ball, I, I think, is, uh, is more of a blue-collar guy. Uh, little, you know, everything this guy done. And, and you know, for all of you Wisconsin fans out there, I'm sorry <laughs> about to say, but Monte Ball is about the only thing you guys had last year. Uh, and you talk about a guy that can carry a team. Monte Ball, I think, is, is certainly one of those guys. Uh, you know, Willis McGay, he's coming off an injury. No, Sean, obviously uh, coming off an injury. And, and what's left is a, is, a, is a fleet of foot little guy in Ronnie Hillman that's not going to offer much protection for Peyton Manning. Uh, I like to pick in Monte Ball. No, absolutely. And nobody scored more. More touchdowns. You look at the stats compared mm -hmm. to Lacey. Looks like the sure guy. And, Unlike you, know, you, does not fumble. Exactly. Yep, yep. And uh, here's the other benefit, right? Uh, you've heard on and on about, hey, this guy's got the worn out legs. He had too many yards. There are a ton of NFL running backs that have had a lot of yards. Matter of fact, even Hillman had quite a few yards his last few seasons in San Diego. Hey, it's the fact is the guy doesn't fumble. Right. The guy's a one cut runner. And then lo and behold, the other piece of the pie comes in this week. We get Alex Gibbs signed to be a consultant all season long, not just for a couple weeks. Right. And and what happens when Alex uh, Gibbs is in the building? You brother? know something, uh, if you just look over your shoulder uh, a few years ago when Alex Gibbs was uh, taking care of our offensive line, a uh, little guy like, well, at the time, it didn't matter what your last name was. It didn't matter if it was Terrell Davis, Mike Anderson, Alandis Gary, Shad Ring. Uh, I could or, have had a thousand. Or the, or the Easter Bunny. Yeah, <laughs> they were going to get a thousand yards, and and Alex uh, Gibbs is certainly responsible for that. Uh, this could possibly be uh, one of the bigger signings, even more so than some of our uh, free agent players. <laughs> So what are you thinking about the new defensive end they brought in? Dare Mike McCoy. You know, we we, we loved you, <laughs> I guess, here. Uh, mostly just due to the fact that you wore the colors. A bit bland for me, she had a little bit uh, vanilla. But, you know, I think Mike McCoy, you need to thank Peyton Manning to get you that uh, head coaching job. Uh, although it'd be a, a division rival, nothing made it sweeter than uh, in free agency, Shad, than coming out and signing your starting right guard and your all-pro defensive uh, uh, or end or outside linebacker in Sean Phillips. Come on. You know, it's just, it, uh, it's, it's one of those things that you just, we keep getting better. You know, every move that we do, and it's obviously, you know, the mentality of winning is certainly there. We're not signing these guys for long-term deals, although uh, uh, our new right guard, Vasquez, yeah, he got himself uh, a little bit. Not, but I think that was certainly more of a long-term need than a short-term gratification uh, with a guy like Phillips. You know, obviously he signs for a million bucks. Uh, is he here next year? Uh, who knows? If he has a ring, he probably won't. But uh, it was a very interesting, and I think, a, a much better free agent signing than the draft. <laughs> now, Shep, let's talk about the most important position on the field, the quarterback. We know that our, who our general is and what he's going to do. Uh, in the unlikely event that something goes down, you know, obviously Brock Osweiler was drafted pretty high last year to, to come in and learn and, and eventually be the successor, but the Broncos go and take a quarterback in this draft. What do you think? 
I'm excited about it, especially Zach. I mean, mm -hmm. I think Zach uh, comes with a great history at uh, Miami, Ohio. I think he comes with four great years of uh, college experience. Mm -hmm. And that's the real uh, unknown about Osweiler. I mean, the guy, the guy's, you know, tall and got a strong arm, and I get all that. But he, he had one, like, full season is all. And then right. you think about the couple years that he's going to learn behind Peyton Manning. It's going to be like one season in six years. And that guy's going to run your, your team. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm glad that they got someone that's had a lot more, uh, yeah, you know, experience, right, right. really, in, in game situations. And so I, I like that pick. I know he was hoping to go a little earlier, but I think as it went along, he had talked to his agent. And his right. agent's like, hey, go to the right team. First on their list, as you would expect, go to Denver, learn from a <laughs> – you got Elway in the building, you got Manning. I mean, what quarterback in, Amer yeah. in the world wouldn't want to come to Denver? I think the Broncos did just fine where they were. Um, but it was, you know, after – after a while, I was just kind of, oh boy, you know, what what are we going to do? Where we, you know, what needs are we going to fill? A little surprised that uh, that uh, no middle linebacker Chad uh, really came within those first four rounds, and that's something uh, that arguably is a pretty big hole right now with the Broncos. Keith Brookings on down the road, Joe May's coming off an injury, uh, Nate Irving kind of untested. So. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, and then you had Guy. I mean, they were certainly there. Mm -hmm. The whole lot of them was there. Right. Mante Teo was there. Arthur Brown, who I loved, there uh, didn't get him, and even Mentor. So, I right. mean, there were some great, great opportunities. But guess what? I, I think when you put it all together, the Broncos only needed to fill a couple gaps, right? right? And, and one of those gaps was a, a cornerback, which they did get a little bit later. Mm -hmm. They... They all started going right before the Broncos' first right. picks, and I think when the roads were gone and the guys like that, I, I think they go for uh, Webster in the third, mm -hmm. third, third round, and I think he'll be a solid pickup. Big Chad Bailey fan. I think he's going right. to be a great addition. He's going to have some time to grow with all the defensive backs. So uh, pretty good there. Now, well, but you're also talking about a guy like Chris Harris on the team. Rogers Cromartie. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, uh, with <laughs> along with Chan. I think uh, the Broncos have done just a tremendous job addressing anything and everything that it has to do with uh, with both uh, sides of the of the uh, defensive backfield. Uh, safety, still a little bit of a question mark. Guy like Dave Bruton, may, uh, you may see him step up. Broncos signed him to four more years. You know, generally a commitment like that's going to be to a guy that's going to do something other than just special teams and maybe possibly a little more. And he's certainly the biggest guy back there. You know, somebody, you, you, for those of you out there that love a guy like Atwater, somebody, a Dennis Smith, somebody, a good guy who could put a lick on you, that's a David Bruton style uh, frame. Uh, but we just, uh, a little bit of a head scratcher at times, you know, where the picks came in. I didn't think uh, that, uh, that a receiver was that big of a, of a need uh, considering the free agents that we signed. But, you know, as we know, you know, it's it, the next man up mentality with the Broncos uh, is certainly there, but not necessarily the talent. All right, Shad, we're going to shift gears back to the offense, specifically the receiver core. Well, I mean, you take the uh, receiving core last year with Decker and Thomas, that were arguably probably the best tandem right, in the right. NFL, right? right. You, maybe Roddy White and uh, Julio Jones right. uh, could keep up with them. But then you throw freaking Wes Walker in the middle, and then you go out and grab a guy like uh, Tavares King, who I think from Georgia is going to be a, a great guy to – learn and, and 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 study it all and i think you'll come in and make some key catches uh and uh, just start to participate i mean and then you throw in tammy and right. you throw in dreesen i mean and then you got the protection of someone like uh, Luis vasquez mm -hmm. from the Chargers. i mean this freaking offense is going to be unbelievable and then you add a healthy running back that doesn't get hurt who's a one one uh, you know one stop and go guy right. i mean it's going to be a freaking amazingly Brilliant offense, and, and and maybe taking the conservative of Mike McCoy away. If we can just keep John Fox, to, mm -hmm. John, you run the big show, and let Adam well, kind of run the offense. Yeah, and, I think and that's and that's happen. very big. That's a very big question. You know, we, last year we had all this firepower, only to see uh, Neil Downs and some some things that made. Uh, uh, us and Bronco Nation, uh, for that matter, pretty frustrated, even more so when, when Peyton wasn't a Denver Bronco. But we also have a new offensive coordinator this year. That, to me, I think is going to be the biggest question mark. But, uh, you know, how do you go to a guy like Peyton Manning? You know, this is his first gig, you know, yeah. as an offensive coordinator. Uh, how do you go to, to the arguably the, the, the superstar of, of the NFL and tell him, uh, you know, this is what I'm going to do to the offense? 
But is it okay with you? Yeah, <laughs> you no, know, I, that's yeah, I, and I think Adam's already going to work through that. Right. I think uh, Peyton will do what he's going to do. Right. But I think, uh, you know, having a guy that's new, wants to prove himself, and then you've got somebody that's not going to let him get too out of control, I think it's mm -hmm. a perfect combination. And already, you know, Del Rio's doing a great job with the defense and all the tools that they've been throwing right. at him with all their defensive draft picks. So, I mean, our <laughs> offense Adam is Gaines so... could be another new head yeah. coach oh, next yeah. year. No, so. it's, yeah, hopefully it's going to take him a few years. But without right. a doubt... Things are prime for the Broncos offense. It's going to be extremely tough to stop that team. All right, Chad, wrapping things up here. Uh, the draft is behind us. We've got a good crop of free agents, uh, a whole mess of uh, unsigned uh, college free agents in. Rookie camp is over. OTAs are just right around the corner. What you feeling? Hey, I'm feeling really good. It's hard not to be excited. You think about that? That's a Super Bowl caliber team right. last year. We've done nothing but add to it. Sure, right. we lost to Merville. That was a big loss, but I think the Broncos moves, as you described earlier, Perfect. I think right now, John Elway, the Denver Broncos are set up for success. I can't wait to see uh, Wes Welker come across the middle, catch one and go 40 yards. I can't wait to see, you know, big pressure from right down the middle with our big, big new guy. Great things are going to happen. If you're not excited about this Broncos season, then uh, I, I get a question whether you're really yeah. a fan or not. Yep, just uh, move your butt to San Diego and enjoy that freak show. Yeah. So, <laughs> until next time, I'm Chad. He's Danny. Reverse that, and this is Bronco Planet.